Hello guys, good day. Welcome to the new Ted's car video. Today we are driving something new and it's gonna be exciting. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the video, uh, video of Ted's car. Today we are driving RS6 as you might have already seen in another video about the first road trip with RS6. Not that I have this car for a long time already, but it's kind of a clickbait. <laughs> a little bit naughty. Yeah. So today we are gonna talk about the driving impression of RS6, what it is and what it is not, and slightly history of RS6. So let's dive right in. The driving dynamics of RS6. Um, in this sense, I will compare this car to M5 and e-tron GT RS and the reason why is first thing first the performance figure is very um, similar between M5 and RS6 with M5 being slightly lighter and it's a BMW which means M5 drives better because the law of physics says if an object has less mass it will handle better <laughs> it's, it's being paraphrased a bit but you know what I mean and the comparison to e-tron GT RS first thing first because the weight of RS6 um, is, def is exactly between M5 and e-tron GT RS and the price between e-tron GT RS and RS6 is literally like very similar it's almost the same once you spec it so once I spec the e-tron GT RS I think it costs 169 and if I spec RS6 it's also gonna be between 150 and 60 maybe it changes now because they changed the price like in August or in July I forgot but yeah, that's the reason uh, uh, for this comparison so and how does it drive RS6 it is a quick car but I can tell you what it is and what it is not it is a very quick daily it's a luxurious family car what it is not it is not a sports car so yeah now we have um, established the foundation let's talk about this car uh, this car is literally fully specced by uh, by star car is the rental company in which my friend is working that's why I have this car for a day and it has carbon ceramic is a it has head-up display and all of the goodies so if you buy an RS6 in this spec it is literally a very capable weapon as the RS6 has um, got this repu uh, reputation as a supercar slayer in form of an Avant and, th and this new one is literally continuing in that in that like kind of like in that in that direction but the thing is it cannot lie that it weighs 2.2 tons which makes it very heavy if you want to carry the speed in a corner it's not that how can I put this it's just not that fun and this vibe also um, was given by e by e-tron GT RS I mean maybe you have seen the video uh, comparison of M5 uh, between M5 and e-tron GT RS by I think by Chris Harris if I'm not mistaken and the winner was clear it was the M5 but because e-tron GT RS is the future so we can be excited that even an electric car can be that capable RS6 slots really in the middle between them because it has more space uh, at the back it has power and thanks to all the tech in this car this car is actually quite a confident cruiser and I took it in uh, into the Autobahn and this car can go over 20 km per hour and it is also confident doing that in the rain in the dry condition in the snow I don't know because it hasn't been snowing yet here so yeah um, and we are going now to the history of Audi RS as, my, as you might have heard people said Audi RS needs to be an Avant an estate why it traced back to the 90s when the RS2 was made by a team from Porsche and it was made by a Porsche team because back in the days Audi didn't have any sport division 
um, the one that we know is now as Audi Sport or Audi RS division. That's why Audi asked the guys from Porsche to make something special. And RS2 is actually based on Audi 80, but because they wanted, they want to make it quite quirky, they are making it in a van form, which is a state form. And that's where it all began. And actually RS6, the first one was made in 2002. So RS6 is kind of like a car that hasn't got a lot of history, not like M3, for example. And back in the days, in when they began to make Audi RS, Audi said, we don't want to create two models at the same time. That's why in 98, they started with the RS4. And then once the production of RS4 stopped, they created the RS6 in 2002. And that first RS6 is literally kind of like built the identity of the RS6 that we know that we know now. So that RS6 has Tiptronic transmission, which is quite sluggish, if you want to put it that way. But in perspective of that time, it's actually good enough. You might be asking why don't they um, make it with the manual transmission like the RS4? No one knows actually, and I also I also don't know. And also the steering is also where RS6 always lag and the first one is literally very spongy, it doesn't, it doesn't give you any feedback and we're talking about 2000s here, so they could make it actually. But that's what makes RS6 RS6, because the new one, people, like before they even buy one, they know what to expect, so they expect this car to be slightly, how can I say it? Less expressive and slightly neutral, which is not not a, not a bad thing per se. So RS6 is known as a as a weapon. It can go really fast. It has 600 horsepower, and it has always been like that. But then it's kind of like the lag in steering and and some stuff that make driving so exciting. Stay uh, RS6 stays true to that, even to the latest generation. You can argue like the like the since 2014 it gets better it gets better the driving dynamic but it's still lacking behind m5 and e63 amg which the which is the competitors for rs6 right but what it makes is an oven an estate a weapon in which you can take your family with in a journey go to the autobahn Go 300 km per hour without any without breaking any sweat, and you can slay a supercar in it. You know why? Because of the quattro. So doesn't matter what the weather condition is. RS6 can always push to the top speed, and what it also makes it can make a bad driver looks good because of the tech, and it is so easy to drive this car, especially with the new one. This one has the real wheel drive which makes the turning circle really small and it is quite easy to, to slot this car into, uh, into the parking space it was so easy, I was actually quite surprised yesterday so I made this um, three point turns in a very narrow street and I and no problem and also because of the 360 uh, cam and everything so you know, as I said, the tech in this car makes a lot of this car it's kind of like part of its identity so, we are going now to the verdict So. RS6, is it worth it? Is it a good car? Should you make it your only car? Well, the first question, is it worth it? It's quite hard to answer because RS6 or, or Audi RS is known for holding its value. Means, if you're like me, if you buy a car used, that's not always a good thing because you want to buy low and sell high. With Audi RS, you need to pay a little bit more than the competitors like M5 or E63 in this scenario. Even E63 Estate is not as expensive as RS6. In fact, I saw yesterday, I found only one, no, not only one, but I think, I mean like the cheapest RS6 with okay mileage, we are talking about 20,000 miles it will set you back 80,000 euros and that's quite expensive for a 5 years old car and this car in this pack 
I think it's going to set you back around 160, 170 thousand new. And if you buy a used one, also with slightly more mileage, so maybe like 20,000 miles, it will cost in Germany right now around 120 until 130,000 euro, which is only 30,000 euro less than new. So it's not a bargain. So if you really want an RS and it needs to be an RS, you need to prepare to spend more money. But having said that, when the time comes to sell this car, you can expect to recoup some of that money. So that's the situation with the RS. So it, I can say it would never be a bargain, but if it needs to be an RS, then you should get one in this sense. So moving on to the next one. Um, is it a good car? It actually is. It's a very luxurious daily slash GT slash holiday car slash family car. It is so good that some might argue like, why would you need your weekend car? Well, first thing first, it depends on your life situation. If you only have one space in your garage, well, you can maybe buy this car and just call it a day. But for me, 160,000 new or 120,000 used with that money, I can buy one pure sports car. Maybe we are talking about mm, Boxster GTS, Cayman GTS or Cayman GT4 even. And then you can get a used A6 Avant for your daily. But that can only happen if you have two spaces in your garage. So yeah, and in comparison to the other competitors like BMW M5, for example, this car does show its weight. So you would feel that it is 2.2 tons in the stop and go traffic, like what happens now. Every time you need to go or you need to stop, you can feel how the brake is struggling to um, to just stop the car, or how much the engine. Um, needs to like you know needs to struggle to just get the car going again and M5 definitely doesn't have that vibe so arguably M5 is a better sporty daily slash family car but I also need to say M5 steering not so good so and E63 I have never heard good thing about the new E63 I mean like the new one the latest one is just facelift so I would argue it's like um, the rest is actually the same like you know the engine and the suspension so yeah so that's kind of like my comparison to the other competitors and I think if I'm not mistaken the engine in this RS6 the 4 liter V8 P turbo is actually quite reliable in comparison to the engine in M5 if you've seen the video of CarWow about car reliability, you would heard about the issues in M5 engine. Yes, so, and I, I've mentioned before, I also want to compare it to the Nitron GTRS. Well, they're actually pretty similar, but I think Nitron GTRS um, might be a better daily than this because the, the fuel consumption in this car, in the city, I just take a look today. Um, 28 liters for 100. The MPG, I will put it down in, uh, down there. Um, and on the on the road trip, um, long distance traveling, well, German autobahn, it um, it took 19.4 liters. So it is literally a gas guzzler. And Etron GTRS has 650 horsepower in overboost mode and it weighed 2.4 tons so pretty similar actually we are, when we are take a look at the numbers but it's electric and believe it or not with a full tank this car can only go 410 kilometers e-tron gtrs with a full charge can go also around 400 kilometers so that makes it interesting and the price is the same so it also it's all i think goes back to you which one do you want? Of course, like the sound of V8, the rumbling of V8, it just gives emotion. But if you get an RS6, it's not a sports car. So it, the chance is it might be your daily from time to time. And e-tron GTRS, 
I might argue, can be a better package. It depends on your life situation again. Yes. So I think I've talked quite a lot, and let's go to the conclusion. RS6. Yes, it is a hype car. It is beautiful. Yeah, but it is not a sports car. It is a very capable, quick daily. And if you have the money, I would say go for it and make it really full spec. And I think you would need the carbon ceramic with this uh, with this weight because the the brake even like this with this carbon ceramic it is not grabby because I think because of the weight of the car the carbon really like um, just doesn't struggle you know because carbon ceramic in my M4 was different it was so grabby in Ferrari as well actually it can be because of the the weight of the car I mean like Ferrari is like 1.5 tons Ferrari Roma and M4 is around 1.6 1.7 tons and this one is 2.2 tons so I might argue carbon ceramic might be a good idea and it is very easy to modulate this brake surprisingly so yes RS6 you need to want it to buy it is it worth it hmm, arguably not but someone who buys a daily for 160 gram is a is an emotional decision. So I would throw it back to you. Which one would you get? BMW M5, E63, RS6, or e-tron GTRS. Alright, if you like this video and it has helped you with your purchase decision and stuff, please leave a like and subscribe for more videos. And ciao for now. Bye.